Hi, I am Susan, I will be presenting a case from Labor Ward. Last Wednesday at 2 a.m., a para 2 lady, whom we will refer to as Mrs. Nura, was admitted, 39 weeks, cephalic, vertex presentation, left occipito anterior position, and in active labor, with intact membranes and cervical dilatation for centimeters, station of the fetal head at minus 3. Usual hupardogram was set, with alert and action lines drawn. General management lines as per our hospital protocol was carried out, and re-examination set after two hours to monitor progress. I expected that, if labor progresses smoothly, she would be delivering after about four to six hours. After two hours, now 4 a.m., I re-examined Mrs. Nura, she is now six centimeters, station is still minus three. I decided to perform amniotomy, First because progress is 1 cm per hour which is below the expected of 1.5 cm per hour as per guidelines, second is that she is about to cross the alert line, and third to help the head to descent. I performed amniotomy, amniotic fluid was clear and the amount was average. Now I will re-examine her after 2 hours to assess progress. After 2 more hours, 6 a.m. Cervical dilatation is arrested at 6 cm, head descent still at minus 3. At this point it is wise to wait and re-examine after 2 hours. 2 hours later at 8 a.m. Cervix dilated 1 cm to become 7 cm, and station was now at minus 1. Since we are 1 hour away from the action line, I decided to re-examine Mrs. Nura at 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. findings did not change, and now we are at the action line. I was not sure if there is cephalopelvic disproportion, and since contractions seemed inefficient, I started oxytocin drip in increments, following our hospital preset protocol. Two hours later, 11 a.m., cervical dilatation progress is still protracted, and on the right of the action line, it was not corrected by oxytocin for two hours. Notice that the station is still not engaged, it is at minus one. Failure of engagement is the most probable cause for this abnormal, Mrs. Nora's, labor pattern. Consultant was notified and decision for CS taken at 11 a.m. Reminder of guidelines that state regarding cervical dietation, at or beyond action line. If after achieving adequate contraction still no adequate progress for two hours perform C-section. This time we will follow our COG timely decision guidelines. Cervical dilatation and station of the fetal head were plotted on a partogram as per our COG guidelines, but here, we follow timely decisions, not alert and action lines. General management lines as per our hospital protocol was carried out, and re-examination set after four hours to monitor progress, not two hours, as in World Health Organization partogram. I expected that, if labor progresses smoothly, she would be delivering after about four to six hours. After four hours, now 6 a.m., I re-examined Mrs. Nura, she is now just less than 6 centimeters, station is still minus 3. This dilatation of less than 2 centimeters in four hours denotes suspected delay. I decided to perform amniotomy, as per guidelines, that state, if delay in the established first stage of labor is suspected, amniotomy should be considered for all women with intact membranes. I performed amniotomy, amniotic fluid was clear and the amount was average. Guidelines quote, whether or not a woman has agreed to an amniotomy, advise all women with suspected delay in the established first stage of labor to another examination two hours later, and diagnose delay if progress is less than one centimeter. Now I will re-examine her after two hours to assess progress. After two more hours, 8 a.m. Cervical dilatation did not reach clear seven centimeters, head descent still at minus three. This is now confirmed delay since cervical dilatation is less than 1 cm. Guidelines state that, for a multiparous woman with confirmed delay in the established first stage of labor, perform a full assessment, including abdominal palpation and PV examination, before a decision is made about using oxytocin. Advise the woman to have another examination for hours after starting oxytocin. Since contractions seemed inefficient, I started oxytocin drip in increments, following our hospital preset protocol. Examination set to 4 hours after starting oxytocin. 4 hours later, 12 p.m., cervical dilatation progress is still protracted, 
with cervical dilatation has increased by less than 2 cm after 4 hours of oxytocin, further obstetric review is required to assess the need for cesarean section. Consultant was notified and decision for CS taken at 12 p.m. ACOG guidelines depend on timely decisions, we follow timely decisions, not alert and action lines. They closely follow Royal College guidelines except in three aspects. First, the active phase is set to start at 6 cm cervical dilatation. Not 4 cm as Royal College. Second, delayed progress is diagnosed if cervical dilatation is less than 1.5 cm per hour since she is a multipara. Not 2 cm in 4 hours as the Royal College. Third is that examination is 2 hourly not 4 hours as Royal College. So for Mrs. Nura, Partogram timely decisions will start from 4 a.m., that is when her cervical dilatation reached 6 cm. Suspected delay will thus be diagnosed at 6 a.m., that is 2 hours later, when cervical dilatation is less than 1.5 cm per hour. This is when amniotomy will be performed. Examination after 2 hours, that is 8 a.m. will still show delay and oxytocin started. Further assessment is carried out 2 hours later, that is 10 a.m., but assessment for decision is carried out 4 hours after oxytocin start, that is 12 p.m., and if still protracted dilatation as in Mrs. Nura, decision for CS is timed at 12 p.m. To wrap up important points. We only have three interventions to deal with an abnormal cervical dilatation during established labor, they are 1. Amniotomy 2. Oxytocin 3. Perform ACS Partogram serves to provide timely decisions as regards when to perform each step. 1. For amniotomy. Who, any time in active phase, and if alert line reached. Notice that partogram starts from 4 cm or more. RCOG, if dilatation is less than 2 cm in 4 hours from admission. Notice that partogram also starts from 4 cm or more. ACOG, if dilatation is less than 1.2 cm per hour for nullipara or 1.5 cm per hour for multipara. Notice that partogram starts from 6 cm or more. Oxytocin. Who, when dilatation is at or beyond action line. RCOG and ACOG, when confirmed delay is diagnosed. That is, if still slow progress, 2 hours after amniotomy. Perform CS. Who, if still slow progress, 2 hours after oxytocin. RCOG and ACOG, if still slow progress, 4 hours after oxytocin. I hope, everything is now clear, 